Welcome to Illinois. <laughs> Thank you. The home of your Chicago Cubs. Not my Cubs. <laughs> They're your Cubs. They're not my Cubs. <laughs> <laughs> we are in Belvedere, Illinois this week. Uh, right outside Rockford, Illinois. We just left the Alliance Rally. Had a great time there. Yes. And this is a thousand trails. And uh -huh. there's some really cool stuff around here. Yeah. I thought it was just going to be like a chill week. We weren't going to do anything. But turns out there's a couple of cool things that if you're in this area, you really can't pass up. Yes. Especially if you're from our generation. Yeah. <laughs> and I got my baseball shirt on today. Spoiler alert. It has something to do with baseball. <laughs> Oh Lord. So we're gonna actually go into Rockford and uh, and show you the first cool thing that we're talking about. We're at the home of the Rockford Peaches. Right. How cool is that? It's very cool. Yeah, if you've ever seen the movie A League of Their Own, you know exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. This is the field where the Rockford Peaches played. They were featured in that movie. Yeah. Well, they actually have a show now, too. That's true. They started a show. Yeah. It's crazy that the field is still here. Yeah. Well, here's a fun fact for you. What you got? Do you know who started the Women's Baseball League? It was Philip Wrigley. Oh, the that's right. The owner uh, of, of the, the Chicago, Chicago Cubs. Cubs. <laughs> yeah. That's why I couldn't remember. I blocked it out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to remember that. <laughs> so, look, I'm just saying if it weren't for Cubs ownership, this wouldn't even be a thing right now. Now, this is cool to be able to walk onto the field yeah. that they played on and see the actual dugouts. I mean, obviously, it was grander back then yeah because they had actual grand big grandstands stands. yeah yeah they said one year their total attendance for the season was uh almost nine hundred thousand. that's crazy i i can't wait to step out like onto the actual field i'm gonna go out onto the pitcher's mound i want to see the di like the distance what it looks like um just get a feel for what it felt like during a during a, a game here yeah but you played ball before you know what it's like well, I know, but I'm just saying, like, where professionals have played. Historically, yeah. yeah. Professionals. And the Rockford Peaches won the pennant four, four times. times. Four yeah. times, which was really good. Yeah. Out of uh, 11 seasons? Yeah. Four That's times? Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. They were badass. There is a local place that will tell us some more about the Rockford Peaches. Yes. And I think we're going to go see them really quick. Yes, please. But I didn't want to leave here without mentioning that... The place that we started at and we were talking in front of yeah. is the original ticket booth. Yes. Still 100% intact, same. still looks exactly the same as yeah. it did when people came here in the 1940s and early 50s to watch the Rockford Peaches yeah. play ball. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Very cool. We are in the Midway Village Museum and we came here to see more Rockford Peaches stuff. There's the trophy that the team received for winning the 1949 championship. And then this was the 48 championship. They won four times, but... I guess they only got two trophies. Did you know that the women had bigger balls than the men? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> and as the as time has gone on, yeah. the balls have been getting smaller. Now, the women started with, with the 1943 12-inch ball, which almost looked like the size of a softball. softball. Yeah. Even though they were still pitching it overhand and yeah, playing that's, baseball. That's impressive. Yeah. And now, today, in Major League Baseball, the baseballs are nine mm -hmm. inches. So, um, we lost three inches. That's a lot. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but when you lose three inches, <laughs> when you go from double digits to single digits, it starts getting to be a big deal. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> these cleats look so uncomfortable. Look at these things. Do you imagine playing baseball in that? Oh my gosh. This was, uh, Barbara Bobby Thompson's cleats that she wore. That was her when she played for the Peaches in 1947 mm -hmm. to get into a game. How much did it cost? Tens of cents. Tens <laughs> of cents. 74 cents to get into a game. Which I don't know. Was that reasonable back then? I don't know. I, I don't know what to compare it. I don't either. 
it was 74 cents to get into a game. Yeah. And Could then by, by the time the end of the league came around, it was 90, 90 cents. Yeah. It almost cost a full dollar to go to, to go to a game. Well, we finished up yesterday doing the uh, Rockford Peaches thing. And I forgot yeah. to talk about it. <laughs> because it wasn't just, yeah, I forgot stuff. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> it's amazing. So it wasn't just the Rockford Peaches stuff. When we went to the yeah. museum, they actually did like a little guided tour. Yeah. Took us on like a journey of what Rockford used to look like. Back in the day. Back in the old, yeah. They took us through like blacksmith. Schoolhouse. Yeah, the one room schoolhouse, which I, I learned a bunch of stuff in there that I didn't know before. Yeah. The firehouse. Yeah, firehouse, the general store. The police station. The police station, which was cool. Yeah, you get to walk through the cells. <laughs> The hardware store. Yeah. A bunch of little cool little areas How and stuff. How they lived back in the 1890s. And our, yeah. Tour guide was very knowledgeable. Yeah. Let's get on to today. It's a new day. New day and new fun. <laughs> We're going to a place. Carrying on with the movie theme. Yeah. So this was what? 1992 and 93 these movies were. Yeah. But the one we're going to go see today, when we roll into there, you will probably recognize some of the areas. Yeah. And you may even get a little deja vu. <laughs> hint, hint. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to the sponsor of today's video, RV Mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. One of the first things you're always going to want to do when you get your new RV mm -hmm. is change out the mattress. Absolutely. Because the mattresses that come in these things, <laughs> it's like sleeping on plywood. Yes. Honestly. Mm -hmm. um, we have the Aurora Lux. Yes. Yeah in the soft, oh, yeah. in the RV King, <laughs> and it regulates our body temperature. It has like science going on in there that yeah. keeps you at a perfect 88 degree sleeping temperature. But if that's not for you, they have a bunch of different styles, a bunch of different firmnesses, yes. and they're custom made for RVs. Yeah. So they will fit in RVs, exactly. unlike some regular mattresses that you'll find in the store. They also come with a 120 night sleep trial, a 10 year warranty, and free shipping directly from the factory in Arizona. They don't just have mattresses. No. They have accessories. I love accessories. We have the pillows, the sheets. Um, our daughter has one of their weighted, weighted blankets. blankets. They yeah. also have mattress protectors and all kinds of other accessories. Hey, check this out. This is the most coolest part. We can save you 25% mm -hmm. on your next RV mattress with RV Mattress by Brooklyn Bedding. All you gotta do is pop over to the link in the description of the video and use the promo code WAGS and save 25% at checkout. Welcome to Puxatawney, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Not quite. No. No. It was portrayed as Puxatawney, right. Pennsylvania in the movie Groundhog Day. Yeah. But it's only about a half hour from Rockford and the little town is called Woodstock, Illinois. Yes. I had no idea this was here. No. We were just looking around the area for things to do. Yeah. And it popped up, the Groundhog Day walking tour. So yeah. you can see the hotel behind us, which was actually called the Pennsylvania Hotel in the movie. Yeah. Well, this is Gobbler's Knob. Yes. <laughs> you know what I think of when I hear Gobbler's Knob? Stop yourself. What? <laughs> Stop. Like, uh, that's not appropriate for YouTube, I guess. No. Like anatomy of a turkey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is Gobbler's Knob. This is where a lot of the scenes happened because a lot of the scenes were the same. It kept repeating. Kept same, it was on same loop. scenes. Yeah. So a lot of it was filmed in the same location. So right here is where they would have set up the stage, and Phil would have came out and seen his shadow. So this was all staged area, and this is where they would have done the news report and all that cool stuff. All right, there's placards. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. On the gazebo here where they danced and it shows the first snowfall dance, Groundhog Day movie. And why is it every time we film, there's always some guy grinding or mowing or leaf blowing or something. In the bar scene where he kept trying to get her drink right and what she what she toast to yeah try to get more knowledge about her actually happened in this building which is the courthouse it's which, weird because it weird. now there's a bar inside there. there there's always been a bar inside of there but it was portrayed in the movie that that took place inside the pennsylvania hotel <laughs> it really didn't it happened here inside the courthouse they're yeah. doing renovations right now so they won't let they us go. in yeah but um i would like to take a moment say a prayer and make a toast to world peace <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, this is Ned's corner. So Phil would have been walking this way and then Ned recognizes him as he's walking in the street over there. And then Bill Murray continues to walk straight up here, steps off the curb up there where we were just at. There's <laughs> lots of stuff going on right here where we're standing. In this corner, yeah. Right behind us in the movie was the Tip Top Cafe. Yes. Which is now called Mary's Mexican Grill. Mm -hmm. And it changed names a couple times. A couple of times. Yeah. Um, and then over here, if you see behind us, this area right here is where Ned recognized Phil. Yeah. Several times. times. <laughs> <laughs> Phil? <laughs> Bang. Bang. <laughs> <laughs> and walked with him walked with him right down to this corner right here and this placard right here is right where bill murray stepped off the curb into the icy puddle of water <laughs> oh we got the reenactment there goes leslie reenacting groundhog Spoosh. oh shake it off <laughs> and if you remember in the tip top cafe back there that's where that's where he was trying to convince Rita that he really has been living the same day over and over again. Yeah. So then he's like eating all the food and then he's going around like introducing her to people like this is so-and-so. They're from this place. To prove it, yeah, that to he's prove not crazy. That, yeah, he's not, he's not crazy. <laughs> now we're heading down to the old man's alley. This is where Bill Murray finds the old guy. The old guy who he'd never give money to in the beginning. But then he discovered this old guy was sick and when he took him to the hospital, he ended up passing away. He tried to save him several times, but this is the alley where he helped the guy too. He did, did CPR on the guy, tried to revive him, tried to save him and all that. And if you look straight through the alley, you can see the theater. We're gonna go over there and we'll talk to, talk to you about, about that scene here in a second too. Now we just took a stroll through the old man's alley. Yeah. And this is the Alpine Theater, which is now the Woodstock Theater. They actually still show movies in here. Yes, they do. It's an active theater, but and it, it wasn't in the movie for very long. No, it's where he um, he stole that money from yeah, the armored from, car. Yeah, and then he bought like a nice Bentley and yeah. some clothes. He dressed up like, like Clint Eastwood. Yeah, like Clint Eastwood, and it was to see a movie here with, with some girl. So yeah. it wasn't in the movie very long, but it's still pretty cool to see it. Yeah. Well, there was a gas station it here. Was. <laughs> this was the gas station where. They made the call after they found out they were trapped by the blizzard. Yeah. Where they stopped. To find a way out. And he's like, uh, don't you have something for celebrities <laughs> or emergencies? <laughs> I'm both. I'm a celebrity in an emergency. <laughs> and so this was this was it. But it's now a insurance an insurance company, <laughs> company with, with no pumps. But, but this, you can tell it that was a gas station. Yeah, that's where the pumps I mean, were. Yeah. So this is Wayne's Lane. This is where uh, Phil gets drunk with a couple of locals. Yeah. And then he's like, he's like at the point where he's like, you know what? I can do whatever, do whatever I want. want. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's when he goes outside and he's trying to help these drunk guys get in the car and they let him drive. And he's saying, you know what? I just gotta, I just gotta do what I want. And he took off and took the cops on a high speed chase. Okay. And then right over here, across from the bowling alley, the train is tracks. where, yeah, the train tracks where he goes driving down the railroad <laughs> track and they're yeah. bouncing and they're bouncing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, there is Wayne's Lanes right there. And then this right here are the railroad tracks where he took uh, took the police down the <laughs> down the railroad tracks on his high-speed chase. This is the bridge. It was a little covered bridge. And this was in the scene where Phil took police on another chase. That's when he had the truck, when he kidnapped the groundhog and drove out to the quarry and eventually drove off the cliff into the quarry and died. That was the first time that he died and discovered that he would die and be able to come back at six o'clock the next morning. You got two for one special. Two for one special. Ha! Two locations right behind us. Yeah. The first one is the house that you see back there. That's the piano teacher's house. Yes. Because he learned that Rita liked a man mm -hmm. that played an instrument. Yes. So he went and took lessons <laughs> at there. And then the big tree right outside of the piano teacher's house, which they don't show it at the same time, so you wouldn't know that they're right next to each other. Yeah. But that big tree right next to the piano teacher's house is the tree where the kid kept falling out of the tree. tree. <laughs> and he catched the kid and the kid was never thankful. No. <laughs> they never are. You have never thanked me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that behind us is the Cherry Tree Inn. Yes. That's where Phil stayed. Yeah. That was the B&B. &B. He looked out his window every he looked, morning. Yeah, right down this street. And uh, to see that it was 
the blizzard had not come yeah. and he was in actually still in the same, same day. day. So there is the inn. I'm gonna walk in the street and hopefully not get hit. So Bill Murray's bedroom would have probably been up in that center window up there somewhere or one of these windows because when he looked out he would see down this street. So in the movie when he looks out you see a little bit of snow and then you see down there but in the very end you see that it's actually covered in snow. So that's how he knows that he made it to Another day. Another day. February 3rd. <laughs> well, there you have it. Puxatawney, Pennsylvania. Otherwise known as Woodstock, Illinois. Yes. <laughs> so if you get the chance to come here, definitely do. It's really cool. It Very only took cute. us about, what, an hour or so to so, do the whole yeah. walking tour. This whole town, the square is cute. The shops are cute. I yeah. Mean... It'd be cool just to come here and hang out. Yeah. You ready to go dance it out? Dance it out. <laughs> you gotta go into the gazebo and dance it out, um, where uh, Bill Murray and Andy McDowell danced it out in the movie. We all know how much I love to dance. Yeah, <laughs> in front of people too. <laughs> hey, stick around for a few seconds. We're gonna honor a fallen hero. If you wanna get involved with helping us help veterans while we're out on the road, everything you need to know is right down in the description of the video. Appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.